JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, five shot two fatally on Rum Lane. Five persons were shot, with two persons succumbing to their injuries in a gun attack along Rum Lane in the Valence Blick Central Kingston community on Friday afternoon. The victims of the double murder were both males. Three other persons were hospitalized. The Constabulary Communications Unit confirmed the shootings. Central Kingston has been under the gun for months, with Prime Minister Andrew Holness saying earlier this week that he was prepared to impose a state of emergency in the area if the violence continues. Eagle charged with several offences in Clarendon. Greg Swaby, otherwise called Craigon, a higgler of Longsville Park, Clarendon, has been charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, and assault a common law following an incident that occurred on Nelson Street in the parish on Monday, June 14. Reports from the Maypen Police are that about 3.30 p.m., 28-year-old Clayton Morrison of Sevens Road in the parish was shot dead by a group of men at a nightclub on Nelson Street. Following police investigations, the 22-year-old Swaby was arrested and charged on June 30 after he was interviewed in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized. Farmer charged after allegedly pointing gun at woman during argument. A farmer who allegedly pointed a firearm at a woman and threatened her has been arrested and charged by the police for the incident which occurred in Butner, Clarendon on Tuesday, June 15. 30-year-old David Lewis will have to appear in court at a later date to answer to the charges of illegal possession of firearm and assault at common law. It is alleged that Lewis went to the home of a woman in the community where he allegedly pointed a gun at her and threatened her. She later made a report to the police and Lewis was arrested during an operation on Friday, June 25. He was interviewed on Wednesday, June 30 and charged. Gym operator charged with rape. A 26-year-old gym operator was charged with rape and grievous sexual assault committed at a gym on Hagley Park Road in Kingston on Wednesday, June 23. He has been identified as Howard Griffiths of Harborview in the parish. Reports are that a woman went to the fitness center where the accused had allegedly promised to employ her. However, it is alleged that he sexually assaulted and raped her instead. A report was made to the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and the Child Abuse, Sisoka, and an investigation commenced. The accused was subsequently charged on Wednesday, June 30, and will answer to his charges in court at a later date. Jamaica surpasses 700 murders. Amid the nightly all-island curfew and other COVID-19 containment measures, Jamaica recorded over 700 murders in the first half of the year. A total of 707 killings were recorded between January 1 and June 30, according to data compiled by the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. This is 5% more than the 671 murders recorded over the comparative period last year. Jamaica recorded just over 1,300 murders all of last year. The All Island Curfew, which requires persons to remain indoors and largely began at 8 p.m., along with a limit on public gatherings, are among a suite of measures imposed by the government to stem the spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19. However, the JCF data shows that nearly a third of the murders recorded in the first half of the year occurred between 6 p.m. and midnight. A total of 159 persons were reportedly killed between the hours of 6 p.m. and 8.59 p.m., the highest for any of the three-hour periods created by the JCF. Some 114 murders were recorded between 9 p.m. and midnight. A total of 195 killings, 98 and 97 respectively, were recorded over the two three-hour periods between 6 a.m. and midnight, according to the JCF data. The St. Andrew South Police Division leads the nation with 90 killings in the first six months of the year, a 14% increase over the comparative period last year. St. James is next with 82 reported murders, followed by Kingston Western Police Division with 61. Trelawney recorded six murders, the least of the 19 police divisions island-wide. St. Mary with eight and Portland with nine are the other divisions with single-digit killings. Businessman fined for 100 pounds of ganja. A businessman who was found guilty of trafficking 100 pounds of ganja after he was chased by police and found with a drug in his car trunk seven years ago was yesterday fined $343,000 in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. 
the 52-year-old convict, Glenoy Williams, of a St. Andrew address, who the court heard has since claimed conversion to Christianity, was ordered to pay $15,000 or serve three months in prison for possession of ganja and $320,350 or face six months behind bars. He was admonished and discharged on the charge of dealing in ganja. On February 6, about 4 p.m., police personnel were acting on information, pursued a Toyota Corolla motor car that was traveling on Highway 2000 en route to the corporate area. Williams, who was the driver, was chased and caught in Kalalu Mews, Kingston. He was subsequently arrested and charged. However, when Williams appeared in court, he pleaded not guilty to the charges, resulting in the matter going to trial. During the trial, Williams maintained that he was not the driver of the car and that he was not aware that ganja was in the car. His claim was that he had traveled to St. Elizabeth to visit his grandmother and a male friend of his who was also returning to Kingston offered him a drive. He further averred that when his friend picked him up, he was oblivious to the smell of the ganja. Following the trial, Parish Judge Broderick Smith found that Williams was the driver of the car and that he was guilty. On Thursday, during his sentencing hearing, his attorney, Vincent Wellesley, during his plea in mitigation, beseeched the judge not to give his client a prison sentence and to accede to the recommendation in the social inquiry report, which asked for a fine to be imposed. Wellesley further asked the judge to consider that his client had no previous conviction and that he is a father of eight children, some of whom are still dependent on him. JMD vows to press jobs, better working conditions. The Jamaica Medical Doctors Association, JMDA, says it will continue its fight to secure jobs of recently unemployed doctors and improved conditions of work. The declaration comes after hundreds of junior doctors took industrial action yesterday, adversely affecting several hospitals. They were upset about working conditions and the non-renewal of the employment contracts of more than 140 doctors, among other things. Following meetings with Ministry of Health officials yesterday, the doctors agreed to go back to work today. In a statement, the JMD outlined the agreements that were reached. Six months and one-year contracts were reversed. As a result, these contracts will be amended to two- or three-year contracts to reflect the pre-negotiated heads of agreement. The offer for the payment of outstanding gratuities owed from 2014 has been received in writing, and we have accepted for the payments to be made in increments until August 2021. The first payment will see 30% of doctors receiving their gratuity, then 40% will get in July and the remaining 30 in August. The doctors who have been owed the longest will be paid first and it will continue to the most recent and we will receive the list of doctors to be paid in each group. We stand by that each payment must be made within seven days of the proposed date. The JMDA described the agreement as a tremendous collective feat. However, the association said that the fight is far from over noting that more than 100 doctors are still without jobs. These are the same doctors who have been integral in the battle against COVID-19 for all Jamaicans, and for them to be currently unemployed is a shame, the JMD has said in a statement. We'll be continuing to advocate with both the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Ministry of Finance to do all we can to get as many of these doctors employed as quickly as possible. The association said that with its renewed energy, it vows to press on addressing all the continued issues facing doctors, such as working conditions, employment post, and leave benefits. We are truly grateful that all doctors were willing to show that we are indeed necessary and integral to the health system of Jamaica. Jamaica records 76 COVID cases, two deaths in one day. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is reporting that 76 Jamaicans tested positive for the COVID-19 yesterday. This pushed the total number of confirmed cases on the island since the outbreak to 50,242. The new cases comprise 39 females and 37 males with ages ranging from 84 days to 90 years. According to the ministry, 24 of the cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, 10 in St. Elizabeth, 9 in Westmoreland, 8 in St. James, 7 each in St. Catherine and St. Anne, 4 each in Manchester and Hanover, two in Clarendon and one in Trelawney. Meanwhile, a 54-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew and an 84-year-old female from St. Anne were the virus's latest victims, pushing the country's death toll to 1,082. Another death was also reported under investigation. The ministry further reported 
190 new recoveries, which pushed the total recoveries to 30,311. There were 18,487 active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.